Welcome, everybody. It's so glad to see you this morning. We are continuing in our second week of our series, Christ's Words on the Cross. You know those famous words Jesus said when he was dying on the cross. And I want to look at those words this morning. I want to look at... Uh, the impact they had in our lives. And last week we talked about the impact of some of those phrases he said because they were words of forgiveness. This week we are going to look at words that focus on compassion. And before we get started, before we get started with Jesus' words, I want us to look at another Phrase that is very familiar, and we find it all the way back at the beginning of the Bible. The beginning of the Bible in the book of Genesis, we read about the words of the first murderer. You know him as Cain, who killed his brother Abel because he was jealous. His heart was filled with jealousy. Remember what God said to Cain? Remember his words? Remember what God said? He asked him where his uh, brother was. And do you remember Cain's response? We find it there in Genesis 4, 9. He says, am I my brother's keeper? Cain's heart was not right. It was filled with the wrong thing. It was filled with jealousy and rage and anger because God favored Abel. Abel gave God his best. Cain didn't. And God favored Abel and Cain was jealous. Our hearts are not to be filled with jealousy, with anger, with rage. Our hearts should be filled with something else. Compassion. Paul writes, in Colossians chapter 3, verses 12, that we are, to be, we are to clothe ourselves with compassion. We are to live it. In fact, every day we're to live it. Jesus talks about this in Matthew 25 when he taught about taught one of his more famous lessons. We read it there. Matthew 25, verses 34 through 39. We're going to jump in through part of it and listen to what it says. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my father. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For, when, for I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came to me. Then the righteous will answer him, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you drink? And when did we see you a stranger and welcome you, or naked and clothe you? And when did we see you sick or in prison and visit you? Do you remember Jesus? what Jesus said was the response to these questions? Do you remember that? We find it in verse 40 of Matthew 25. He says, And the king will answer them, Truly I say to you, as you did it to one of the least of these, my brothers, you did it to me. We are to show compassion to the least of these. It does not matter who you are, you show compassion. We are to help those who are in need. And we see examples all throughout the Gospels. Jesus caring about the least of these. He healed the sick, the blind, the deaf. He healed the blind, those who were in need, those who were hungry. Those who had disease. Those that others had been forgotten. We see one example in Matthew 14, 14. 
For it's written, When he, being Jesus, went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion on them, and healed their sick. Jesus had compassion for those who were in need. As I look at the word compassion, I can think of many other ways to describe its meaning. But this morning, I want to talk about a couple of those specifically. Because this morning, the words we hear are again from Jesus. They're his words on the cross, and they are words of compassion. You know, it's written there, there were certain people at the crucifixion. Not everybody came. Most of the disciples, gone. They ran. They were scared. They were afraid. But some did come. Like Jesus' mother, Mary. Like John, the apostle. And Jesus had a conversation between them while he's hanging up on that cross. He saw his mom and he saw John. And listen to what he says. We find it in John chapter 19, verses 26 and 27. It says this, When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. And then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her to his own home. Jesus is hanging up on the cross and he's worried about his mom. To be compassionate means that we are to have concern. That's our first point this morning. It means we are to have concern. Despite Jesus' suffering, he makes sure someone is going to help look after his mom. It's pretty much considered Joseph has passed away at this point. His adoptive father has apparently passed away, and she most likely has little to no income. Aged, up in years, Jesus wanted to make sure she would be okay. You know, a while back I was reading an article on leadership. And it talked about how every leader should not actually be a leader until their heart has been broken. And I thought that was kind of interesting. I thought, why would your heart have to be broken in order to be a leader? Can't you be a good leader without having your heart broken yet? I thought that was interesting. And the example they used was Nehemiah. Nehemiah, as you know, is the book of Nehemiah is found in the Old Testament. And it's the story how Nehemiah, a cupbearer to the king, cupbearer being one who basically tried all the food to make sure it wasn't poisonous and if he didn't die then the king ate but he had grown and had a friendship with the king but Nehemiah's heart had been overcome overcome by his people How do I know this? You look in the story. See, his story really started with a question. Really started with a question. The question was how was Jerusalem? Well, Nehemiah has found out. The answer was not good. When he found that out, his heart was broken. 
Listen, this is what it records. Nehemiah 1.4. As soon as I heard these words, I sat down and wept and mourned for days. I continued fasting and praying before the God of heaven. Nehemiah's burden drove him to lead the nation of Israel into a successful rebuilding campaign. Listen, it said leadership should have their hearts broken. We all should have our hearts broken. We as believers should be asking, what breaks our hearts? Where is our compassion? Has your heart broke for someone who is in need? Jesus is hanging there on the cross, suffering in every way imaginable, and yet he is concerned about his mom. Listen, compassion doesn't have an on-off switch. You can't just turn off compassion or just turn it on. Our hearts must be filled with it. We must care. I remember watching a commercial, and I believe this is for an insurance company, but the commercial depicted a high school football game. And for the losing team, it depicted that they lost in what seemed to be possibly a bad call by the official. And they took it hard. So a father of two of the losing team football players was driving home, driving his sons home, and they came across a man with car problems. It's pouring the rain. It wasn't a good situation. It happened, to, and they happened to come across the person whose car was broke down was the very ref who they thought made the bad call that cost them the game. The ref at first immediately thought, oh, great, I've got to help. And he looks and he sees the jerseys on the kit of the two boys in the back of the car, the back of the vehicle. And they were the jerseys of the losing football team. And for a moment, it was awkward. The ref was wondering, am I going to get any help or not? But the father says, tells his kids, scoot over. Make room for the ref. And the ref gets in. You know, it's easy to help when things are great. It is so easy to help when things are perfect. Things are great. You're in a wonderful mood. You may feel more generous to help. But we're not called to be compassionate some of the time. We're not called to turn on a switch when things are going well and be compassionate then. You know, that father could have saw the, who the official was and said, nope, we're driving right on by. Jesus could have said, I'm trying to save the world. I don't have time to take care of that. I don't have time to take care of my mom. But compassion doesn't have an on-off switch. Our hearts are to be full of compassion. Paul wrote in Galatians 6.2 that we are to bear one another's burdens. Listen, our hearts must break. We must care. But that caring doesn't stop there. Listen to the words of Peter as he wrote in 1 Peter chapter 3, verses eight, verse 8. And he says, Finally, all of you live in harmony with one another. Be sympathetic. Love as brothers. Be compassionate and humble. We are to be sympathetic. Our hearts should break, but, it, but we just don't stop there. I was reading the other day about the story about this evangelist. Uh, it's an evangelist by the name of Everett Swanson. And back in 1952, 
he went to South Korea to preach the gospel to troops in the Republic of Korea's army. And during this visit, he started noticing kids all running around, and he was, he was deeply moved by the amount of kids who were orphaned. And so he stopped and talked to a missionary there. And this missionary started challenging the evangelist, started challenging Everett Swanson and said, you have seen the tremendous needs and unparalleled opportunities of this land. What do you intend to do about it? Translation, I see your heart breaking. You see these kids who are in need, your heart's breaking. Are you going to express compassion? Listen, we're to have sympathy or empathy. Our hearts should break. We should feel concerned. But is that enough? No. We are, my second point this morning, we are to display mercy. We are to show mercy. Jesus said in Mark 10, 10 for even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Jesus made it clear that we are to follow him down the path of compassion. Our hearts must break. They must be filled with compassion. And we must use our hands and our feet and go out and show compassion. We are to go out and display compassion. Randy Frazee, pastor who works alongside of Max Lucado at Oak Hills Church out in San Antonio. He said these words, Jesus has brought us into the family business, placing others first to meet needs today, while also changing the future for anyone who will respond to the message of salvation. Those who are his friends will be willing to serve as he did. In God's kingdom, even help a person with a temporary necessity has an eternal purpose. Even while Jesus is dying on the cross, he took care of his mom and he arranged that she would be taken care of. There was another person there that day that Jesus showed mercy to. He's one of the thieves on the cross. Each gospel notes that Jesus is not crucified alone but is executed along with two robbers, one on either side. And this fulfilled Isaiah's prophecy that the suffering servant would be, as it says in Isaiah 53, 12, numbered with the transgressors. Initially, both of these thieves, both of these robbers, they mocked Jesus right along with everybody else there. But something happened. Something happened changed and we find out what happened in Luke chapter 23 Luke chapter 23 verses 39 through 43 says this one of the criminals who were hanged railed at him saying are you not the Christ save yourself and us But the other rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we, indeed justly, for we are receiving the due reward for our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. And he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And he said to him, Truly, I say to you today, You will be with me in paradise. This thief's heart changed. And Jesus showed compassion on this man by giving him the exact thing he needed. Salvation. Oh. 
This thief is truly a person who we would call, who we would label one of the least of these. And Jesus showed compassion. He displayed mercy. He he gave him grace. We cannot give salvation. We're not Jesus. That is only done by God alone. But you know, we can display mercy. We can show mercy. Remember the story, the evangelist, Everett Swanson, I was talking about earlier. The one who went to South Korea, and while he was there preaching, he saw all of those orphans in need. Well, as Paul Harvey used to say, now for the rest of the story. Swanson ended up returning home to the U.S., and along with his wife Miriam and with the help of some others, a ministry was launched on behalf of these orphans. And at his revival meetings, Everett Swanson began to share about the needs of these Korean children for, for these orphans. And believers started to donate to help these children, to help fund, to help meet their daily living needs. By 1954, the stewardship program was still offered. And people could continue to give and help provide food, shelter, medical care, Bible instruction for each and every child that was a part of this program. But in 1963, Everett Swanson, he started becoming uneasy because this program had his name on it. But he didn't want it to have his name on it because it wasn't about him. And so he was inspired by Jesus' words in Matthew 15, 32. Let me read them to you here. Jesus said, I have compassion for these people. They have already been there with me three days and have nothing to eat. I do not want to send them away hungry or they may collapse on the way. So Everett Swanson changed the name, took his name out of this ministry, and changed the name to where it is now known across the world today as Compassion International. What began as this missionary's challenge to an evangelist who saw this need for these kids, is now today a needed ministry, a vital ministry that serves over a million children in more than 25 nations. This started with one man wanting to show compassion on children, on orphans who were in need of heart's full of compassion. It's amazing what you can accomplish. And see, here's the thing. Even while Christ is on the cross, he showed compassion to his mom. He, to help her, to make sure she was taken care of. He displayed compassion to the thief and forgave him his sins. Now is our turn. We must display the compassion of Christ. My third point this morning. We must display the compassion of Christ. We are to live like Jesus. We are to help the least of these. We are to show compassion. The Apostle James writes in James 1.27, Religion that is pure and undefiled before God the Father is this, to visit orphans and widows in their affliction, and to keep oneself unstained from the world. What does this mean? 
We see those in need and our hearts should break for them, such as orphans and widows. Then we are to use our hands and our feet, and we don't just feel sympathy, we don't just feel bad for them and wish we could do something, but we do what we can. We give our best. Heart, hands, feet. They all come into use here. If we are following Jesus and living with compassion, our hearts will be focused on God and not on the temptations of this world. This will go a long way in keeping us unstained in this world, from this world. See, we're going to start changing our priorities and how we use our time. We are set free to give because we trust God for our needs. The least of these, those people in need, will be cared for and restored. We will truly teach our neighbors, or we will truly reach our neighbors and our towns. And the Spirit of Christ will be alive and well in our lives. And before you say, I don't know how much I can do. I don't have much. How much can I give? Well, again, we follow Christ's example. What can we give? We give our all, just as Christ did. You give what you have. Yes, it may not be as much as somebody else. But that's not the point. You're giving your best. That's what matters. This morning, if you would like to receive compassion from Jesus... This morning, if you would like to receive salvation like the thief on the cross did, if you would like to receive his grace, we offer a time of invitation. Now, God wants to give you grace. He wants to show you compassion and forgiveness. He wants to help take care of us, just as Jesus told Mary, Woman, behold your son. And he told John, Behold your mother. And God wants to take us home one day, just as Jesus told the thief, Truly I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. But it starts with making Jesus your Savior. This morning, we offer a time of invitation. And that invitation is open 24 hours, 7 days a week. It's not limited to just when we're singing a closing song. But we're here, standing, right now. And if you don't know him, you can come forward, accepting him as Lord, confessing Jesus as your Savior, repenting to start changing of your ways, be baptized into him, start a new walk. Live a lie. Caring about others. Loving our Lord and loving our neighbor. Desiring to show compassion on those who are in need. Because we have been showed compassion to, given the greatest thing that we need, and that's salvation. This morning, if you want that gift, Come forward today and make Jesus your Lord. Why don't you do that now as we stand and as we sing?